it still feels really weird saying that, you know, we're playing on a Thursday night. You think of all the years, you know, 17 years in a row, I believe it is, we made it into the knockout stages of the Champions League until this season. And all of those jokes we've made, Tottenham playing on a Thursday, Man United playing on a Thursday, and now here we are. Um, although we're getting kind of used to it, and I think we're going to have to get used to it because it looks like we're going to be playing in the Europa League next year as well. Potentially. Um, our best hope, I think, of getting into the Champions League, of course, is to be winning the Europa League. But uh, we have some real tough teams left in the competition. Napoli, Atletico Madrid, the list goes on. So it's really going to be tough. Um, but tonight we had, well, you could say the draw was very kind for us. We had Ustersund. Um, my Swedish isn't great. And Ellen, my fiance, she's Swedish. She's not too happy about that. I have to ask her to tell me how to pronounce this all the time. Um, but we've, we've smashed them 3-0. And you could say it wasn't really a spectacular performance. But I think the commentary team uh, with BT, they kind of said that Ostersund are pretty much a League One side in terms of their overall quality. And I don't know if I agree with that. I thought Ostersund looked pretty good in some areas. Um... But of course, we were always going to win this game, really, weren't we? Unless it was going to be one of those famous slip-ups. But uh, I'm very pleased to report that we have won the first game 3-0. And that is pretty much tie over. Now, that's a really good thing because it means the next time we play against them at the Emirates, we don't have to really go for it. We don't have to put forward our first team. We can get away with potentially going with a lot of our reserve players, young players that don't normally get game time. Scrape a 1-0 win maybe, a 0-0 draw, whatever, because we now have three away goals and uh, we're looking good to go through. So I think we can relax a little bit. What I do want to say though is after a game like today is it just proves to you that some of the Arsenal players, specifically one of them, which I might be a little bit harsh on tonight, doesn't belong at this club. And you probably know who I'm going to be talking about, Mr. Danny Welbeck. Now, um, Wenger said in his press conference and in his pre-match interviews that Welbeck's looking sharper than ever. He thinks he sees him as a striker and not on the left side, on the right side. I mean, quite often, so far this season at least, or since, our, uh, since he's joined Arsenal really, he has been deployed out on the left side a couple of times, kind of like a left forward. Um, I, I can kind of see that he's, you know, he's an athlete, he's a good runner, he's strong, um, but he has the first touch of an elephant that's half asleep. He he's quick, he's strong, but he's just so. Uh, I, I I don't know I don't know how to describe Welbeck. Sometimes it is it's quite embarrassing. Some of the first touches he makes, the runs he makes. I mean, he's quite good in the air. There's a couple of occasions where we got the ball in the air to him, and he looked like he was going to win it, and he will win it. And then the header will just go miles off target because his finishing is is very poor. I think for a striker. Now there have been times where I thought actually there's there's something there. You know the hat trick he got, which was very. Henri-esque. I think it was Galatasaray he scored his hat-trick against. And we all probably thought, do you know what? Maybe he just wasn't being played right at Manchester United. But no, let's be honest. I think Danny Welbeck is a good player. Um, he's shown that he can be a quality player for England. Um, but for Manchester United and for Arsenal, he is yet to prove why he's supposedly so good. I, I don't see it. I think the fact that Lacazette's out until April or Bamiyang can't play in the Europa League... The fact that we're going to be relying on Welbeck, it's not good news. And that really does hurt our chances of winning this competition, which are already quite slim, I would say, with the likes of, you know, some of the other teams left in the competition. Um, but let's talk about some individual performances that I thought were good. Um, there, was, there was one player that I was really hoping to see have a great game today, and that was Maitland-Niles because he was playing down the middle, a box-to-box centre midfielder. He's been... Uh, He's been talking about that would be his preferred position, although he's happy to play on the left side as a left wing back. Whatever he has to do to get into the team, he's willing to do it. But he does want to play in that Jack Wilshere, Aaron Ramsey type role. But tonight, I thought he was a little bit iffy. There were, there were times where I thought he looked a bit out of his depth. Um, there was a few moments again where his first touch really let him down. He didn't know whether to go forward or come back. But that's okay. He's young. And what I do see in, uh, in Maitland-Niles is... A really good work ethic. He's got a really good work rate. He's really, you know, always full pelt going for it. He gives 100% and he's he's a great tackler. I love the fact that he's on to them so quickly. He's, he's the kind of player that Liverpool would love. Um, I'm not saying he's as good as some of the Liverpool players. Of course he's not. He's still so young. But that type of player that just ambushes the other team when they've got possession. That's what Liverpool do week in, week out. They pressure any team, and uh, I think we lack that, so it's nice to see Maitland-Niles 
doing that job for us. So I, I can definitely see potential of him becoming a centre midfielder for us. But all in all, I think his performances have been better whilst out on the wing. That's just my uh, my personal opinion. I thought Mikatarin was good. Got another assist tonight. Um, again, there was a few moments where his final pass wasn't quite right. Still feels like he's settling into the squad a little bit. But him and Meza Ozil, the, the creativity we had on display tonight, and the fact that we were against such well, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna belittle them, but they're they're not the greatest side ever. We were able to split them open very easily, and that is why we've come away with such a big win. Although we rode our luck in some areas. Um who else do I think had a good game? Mustafi. I think he's been quite good recently. He's a very hot and cold player, has good games, has bad games, like everyone else, but he seems to have quite a lot of bad games. He's very inconsistent, but most recently, I would say he's he's up there with our best defender, along with Monreal, who I want to praise again in just a second. So, well done to Mustafi. I really do think he's uh, he's he's showing what he can do now. I think Chambers was pretty good as well. Um, I can see why he's gone in ahead of Holding. I think Holding last time he played was really poor, so that's that's kind of pushed him down the pecking order a little bit. So maybe he needs a loan out, something like that. Um, Bellerin was was pretty good tonight as well. Made some good runs going forward. Again, some poor crosses, but. Um, we, we won 3-0. I can't really complain too much. But once again, one of our best players was Monreal. And I can't praise this guy enough. I just wish he was, you know, 27, 28 again. Because we're only seeing, I'd say, over the last six months, how good he can be going forward. We've had, we've had Monreal as a great defensive player for many years now. I think there was only one season where he had a pretty off, an off season, really. Otherwise, he's been really good at the back. But... Going forwards, he's been incredible. I think we should drop Welbeck and throw Monreal up front and put Kolasinac at left back. That's that's exactly what we should be doing. So Monreal, fantastic. Um, and Ospina, captain for today. It really suited him. I think he's going to be really happy about that. He's he's done a great job at Arsenal. You know, it's not easy being a second choice player, especially a goalkeeper, because they don't really get injured too often. They're never as tired as some of the more you know outfield players. Goalkeepers tend to play every game that they're fit, right? And when you're second choice goalkeeper, unless you're at a club where they like to change it up in different competitions like Arsenal do, it can be very frustrating. So he's taken his chances every time he's come into play in the Europa League, FA Cup, whatever it may be. And I really like him. And I actually, you know, some people will disagree with me, but I feel more comfortable with Ospina in goal than I do with Czech. I think Czech is, is a better shot stopper. I think because he's a bigger guy, he's got a bigger frame, longer arms. He's able to, to, to pull out some great saves when the ball's coming right at him. Um, but when it comes to reflexes, being in the right place at the right time, just a bit quicker, cat-like, I, I really do like Ospina a lot. And I'd be gutted to see him go unless, of course, we replace him with a better, younger goalkeeper that can learn from Petr Cech next season instead of uh, Petr Cech playing ahead of him. Um, what else did I think about tonight? It will be. I mean, we've given him a lot of stick as Arsenal fans recently. I thought he was okay tonight. Uh, he seemed to drift into the centre a lot more. I think he just feels more comfortable going in to the centre. I think most of the time you see he receives the ball on the wing, on the left or the right, whatever it may be. The, the front players rotate a lot in this formation we're using. But most of the time he drives down the middle. And uh, if he can improve his end game, the passing, the shooting, he will be a great player. There's no doubt about it. He's technically a good player. Great first touch sometimes. Um, good dribbling. You know, holds off his man very well. And he's got an eye for a pass. It's just the, the final execution that sometimes isn't there. That sounds a lot like someone else. Bellerin, maybe. Bellerin is exactly the same. He's just got he's got everything except from that final bit of finesse, you know. Um, but overall, it's it's a good win tonight. This could have been an absolute nightmare. Can you imagine if we lost tonight? I can see it now. The amount of banter losing to a farmer's side, as some people like to refer to clubs as. That's really disrespectful. I tweeted out when Monreal scored, who needs Aubameyang? You know, who needs Lacazette when you've got Monreal? It's a little bit of a joke, right? Instantly, I got replies like, you're playing against farmers. You're playing against dentists and doctors. Like, it's really disrespectful. They're, they're actually an incredible an incredible story. They're a really good team coming up from uh, from Sweden. They've gone up through the ranks over the years, and they're now in their top league and playing in Europe. I mean, it's like a really small English team going through League 2, 1, Championship, up into the Premier League and then getting into the Europa League. It's much harder over here. Of course it is. The quality is much higher. But the story is incredible. And uh, Ustersund are there for a reason. They've done well. They've knocked out some other good teams and they deserve to be there. 
And I think we showed them respect tonight. I think they were a little bit starstruck at the start. You know, seeing Mikatarian and Meza Urzo in the tunnel, it's a bit like, oh my God, we're on the big stage. And you could see they were nervous. But as they got into the game, you could really see their quality. Um, but they're not, they're not going to win this competition. They're not going to be able to turn this tie around. When we go to the Emirates, I expect to see a very weakened team from us. Maybe even them as well, because they've got no need to go for it. Although... I believe their season starts in a couple of weeks, so they might they might not need to rest any players. They'll just go full team, full strength. But uh, I expect to see a weakened team. I don't expect to see Urza or Mikatarian play in that game, and we'll get a comfortable one nil win, something like that, to get us through. But that is the end of this video, guys. Um, I really appreciate you watching this series. I know some of these episodes don't get too much traction because no one actually cares unless it's a big, big, a big uh, occasion, a big team that we're playing against. But Hopefully you check these videos out anyway, just to hear my opinions on the games and the players and stuff like that. Overall, it's been a good result and I will see you for another video very soon.